Hi, um, my name is Victor Resendez. I'm the Youth Director of Elevation here at Esperanza. And we're going to continue our series on the teaching of Jesus uh, based on a question that was um, prompted by the religious leaders um, asking him about the Ten Commandments. So he wraps it up nice in this particular um, uh, part of Luke, um, um, Luke's Gospel. And uh, so we're going to uh, go ahead and jump right into it. Last week we talked about uh, how to love the Lord your God with all your heart and what that entails. So if you're interested in that teaching, uh, you can go to our podcast and click on that uh, particular topic and it will give you the more in-depth look of what we said about loving God with all your heart. Uh, so to just review, this is what the scripture says. So Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. So what we're going to be doing in this series is we're going to be breaking down this particular scripture into, so, so what we can go in more depth of what Jesus meant. So again, like last, last time we talked about the heart, this time we're going to talk about the soul. Uh, so love the Lord your God with all your soul. And what does that entail? So uh, let's go into the question right away. So what is the soul? So I took it upon myself to go into the um, dictionary to find a, um, a definition of what the soul meant. And the dictionary describes it as, as so. It says that animating and vital principle in humans credited with the faculties of thought, action, and emotion, and often conceived as an immaterial entity. Uh, the spiritual nature of humans regarded as immortal, uh, separable from the body at death. Uh, so that's the definition of the soul. Um, in 1901, uh, there was a doctor named Duncan uh, McDougall, try, and he tried to prove the existence of the human soul. To do so, he measured the weight of a person at the moment of death, and he had six patients of all which experienced weight loss with the average loss of weight uh, being 21 grams. Um, so, uh, it, it makes me think of, with this particular experiment that, that this doctor did of, of, of this weight loss, it makes me think of the time when um, in my lifetime, I've been able to witness two, um, two deaths of people that were very important to me and uh, very meaningful to my life. That was my grandfather and my, and my father. Um, and I remember my grandfather going uh, to his service in the open casket and passing through it. Uh, out of curiosity, I touched the body. And it was a very interesting feeling of of this cold that is totally different from weather, like if, if it's cold outside or if the AC is on very high, uh, it had nothing to do with that, including ice. You know, it, it's a different texture and a different type of coldness that you'll find or that you will experience when you touch a dead body. Uh, that was one thing. And also the stiffness of it really grabbed my attention. Anyways, uh, and then to witness his body lifeless literally impacted me because I knew him intimately, you know, I knew him very well and I have felt his love, I have felt his affection, I have felt, um, you know, his, his uh, physical affection towards me, you know, caressing me or, or, uh, <laughs> or um, you know, just loving on me because he, he, he did love me dearly. Uh, my father was the other service that also impact me because my dad and I share so many things together uh, including you know playing soccer and jokes and music and just so many many wonderful fulfilling things that, that I had experienced with him so again it impacted me to see his body in front of me and lifeless there was no personality to it so it made, it made me think and it makes me reflect on how the word of God is very true when it comes to that certain component inside of us that brings us life. And so what does that entail? So it, it, it reminded me of this particular uh, scripture. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, Then the Lord formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And then and the man became a living creature. Now that's so true and evident in all of us. Why? Because we're all designed 
and we all feel and think and, and just experience different. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's very unique to see everybody else's uh, personality. And every one of us has something distinct about us. About us. And so it, it, it just connects with the scripture of him breathing life into us. And um, so it's something to really think about. It's something to really consider. So when we're talking about the soul, there's got to be something within us that gives life to this uh, shell or this body, that you know, this thing that we call the body. Um, it also reminded me of this scripture in, in Ecclesiastes 12, uh, 7. It says, And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Well, here's another quick story about my dad. Uh, he, de he decided to uh, be cremated. So when they gave us his uh, cremated body in that, in that little uh, uh, urn, um, I looked into it out of curiosity, and the, the, the texture of the cremated body was similar to the sand, to white sand. But at the same time, you could tell the grinding of the bones were there as well. I mean, there were it's in pieces of bones in it. Um, um, and it just, again, it made a connection to what the scripture is indicating. That we go back to our original state of being, which is coming from earth, or coming from the soil, or, the, or dust, or whatever, however you want to call it. Uh, and again, it confirms God's word of how we were created by him. And then it says, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. So that little component of ours is the direct relationship to him or uh, the, the direct contact with him. So we, in other words, it goes back to him. Uh, and that's where eternal life uh, comes in. Well, um, so this is what the three points that, I, that I, I can tell you about the soul. So the soul is a true connection to God. It's that God-shaped hole that can only be fulfilled by your creator. Uh, and, and an example that I immediately think about is Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was this incredible, talented musician, uh, performer, um, singer, just entertainer overall. Uh, and he pretty much had the world at his feet. But his ending was not as joyful. Um, he, when he died, he was taking uh, medication to, to sleep. Uh, the medication was, the dosage was so heavy, it was base, basically what doctors use to put you um, under, so that when, when they perform surgery, uh, you know, it, it, you, you won't feel the pain. And so it's, it's really an anesthetic type of medication that Michael Jackson was taking. So it makes me wonder what was going on with him, uh, whether in his emotions, his thoughts, his mind, that it was so much for him to bear that he could not sleep. And, and I know that all of us uh, can relate to that because the times that we don't get any sleep is when we're worried or when we're um, heavily thinking about something or there's just a certain heaviness among us. And so then we're, we're, we, you know, we have sleepless nights. So it just makes me think of what was going on in Michael Jackson's life and in his heart and in his mind that he couldn't sleep. And unfortunately, he had a tragic ending to it. Um, but again, it just it makes you wonder that Maybe his soul was not fulfilled, and, and that's why uh, he had that, that ugly ending. Um, and it was that God-shaped hole, that little 21 grams, you know. Uh, there's a movie called 21 Grams that describes it in a very poetic way that the 20 grams, 21 grams are equivalent to uh, a stack of nickels. Uh, and, um, and so it just, again, what is that little component that Michael Jackson was missing? He, you know, he was filling it in with other stuff, you know. Um, the other point is uh, it, how to find out how to love God with all your soul. Well, do those things that nurture your soul. What are those things that you enjoy? What are those things that you find life in? Um, I personally find life when I spend time with my daughter, when I uh, spend time with my students, um, when I play soccer, you know, when I'm singing at the top of my uh, lungs, my favorite jam on, in the car or you know, in the house or whatever. Uh, those are things that really nurture my soul. I know they sound a bit superficial, but they're mine and they do bring me life. Also, um, you know, 
I love to hear a good teaching and learn something new. That brings me life. So I encourage you, you know, find those things. Find those windows in your daily life that bring you those joyful times or, or those things that just touch your heart or touch your, your inside and go, man, this is, I love this and I, I could stay here forever. Um, that's a way of nurturing your soul. Well, there is where you'll find that true connection with God. That's where he's, he is. Um, and then um, part of the relationship is to feed your soul with his word. Meditate on the things that are written in, in his in his. In scripture. Uh, one of my favorite uh, books to go to is Psalms because I think David captured our emotions to the max. Uh, you know, anger, frustration, uh, uh, gratefulness, joy, you name it. it. They're all there. They're all there. And, and the way he writes it in such a poetic um, pleading at, at, at some points, you know, it, it's just very inspiring. It, it puts me in touch with my personal emotions and maybe things that I'm going through. And so when I read that, the Psalms, it, it's such a, it's just such a reality to get in touch with my feelings or emotions or to be able to just claim a God, and, look, this is where I'm located, this is where I'm at, uh, or this is how grateful I feel, or whatever. So that's another way to nurture your soul. So to, in, in those points, I think those are very good uh, ways to love God, your Lord, I'm sorry, love your Lord God with all your soul. Uh, so the questions to ponder on is, uh, do you know your soul? How well do you know your soul too? You know, and then the other one is, uh, is your soul available to God's love? Uh, and so those are the questions to kind of think about and meditate on. Uh, next time we'll be talking about the mind. You know, how do we love God with all our mind? And so... Uh, I hope that you get to uh, join me in the, in the next teaching.